Yeah. Understanding the opposing person's point of view is the only way we can understand truth. The only way that we can thoroughly understand even our own ideas. We need to be able to argue both sides. And some would say even more so the opposing side. It's very convenient to, to argue why animals shouldn't be killed. It's very easy to argue for the ethical reasons of veganism. But can you, as a vegan, argue the opposite? Can you argue and see the point of view of a carnivore? Of someone who eats meat and hunts? And the hunter, can you understand and empathize and argue for the vegan side? The, 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 for the person who doesn't want to harm any animals? And I'm not going to do that here because that's not what this is about here. We're not trying to unpack specific ideologies and, and almost fuck it, almost religions that they're becoming. I'm not trying to unpack that here. I'm trying to build, we're trying to build a framework that the rest can be built upon. If you first give the devil his due, looking at his arguments from his perspective, you can find value in them and learn something in the process. Or two, hone your positions against them if you still believe they are wrong and strengthen your arguments further against challenge. And this will make you much stronger and smarter, more intelligent. Then you'll no longer have to misrepresent your opponent's position. And you'll be at much better odds to withstand your own doubts. Imagine that someone holds a stack of $100 bills, some of which are counterfeit. All the bills might have to be spread on a table so that each can be seen and any differences noted before the genuine can be distinguished from the false. This is the sort of methodical approach you have to take when really listening to someone trying to solve a problem or communicate something important. If upon learning that some of the bills are counterfeit, you too causally dismiss all of them, as you would if you were in a hurry or otherwise unwilling to put in the effort to listen. The person will never learn to separate the wheat from the chaff. I think it's so helpful to think of ideas and thoughts and arguments as a set of $100 bills. Some of them, some of the nuances of those ideas are going to be real. Count, they're going to be gold. They're going to be quality. They're going to be pristine. But some are going to be false. Some are going to be counterfeit. Some need to be remodeled and remade. And if you listen instead without premature judgment, people will generally tell you everything they are thinking. And with very little deceit, people will tell you that most amazing, absurd, interesting things. Very few of your conversations will be boring. You can in fact tell whether or not you're actually listening in this manner. If the conversation is prob is boring, you probably aren't listening very well. And I'm going to add to that. You probably, you're probably the boring person because you're probably not asking questions because you're probably not curious. And that's a whole different thing. Why aren't you curious? Why don't you want to ask questions? What type of questions do you really want to know? What do you want to know? Do you want to know anything? Why don't you want to know anything? Of course you want to know something. What is it? What do you want to know? Ask yourself, then ask the questions. Things won't become boring anymore, no matter who you talk to. Whether it's a jet skier, or a, or a snowboarder, or a mathematician, or a chess player, or a midwife, or a nerd, whatever. There should be, there's this interesting dialogue to be had with everybody. If you just listen, ask, and are curious.